Good Wednesday evening, everyone. Welcome back to Weather with Sim again. I hope you guys have all had a great week so far. And in today's weather forecast, we're going to be going over the threats for severe storms. And we do have a slight risk still continuing through the nighttime hours tonight. But then after today, that threat of severe weather kind of does die down quite a bit. And we will go over that. And then we'll also be going over the flood threats and, of course, um, how much rain fall we can expect as we do head into the end of July and we'll even be talking about the temperatures and as well as the precipitation wind and as well as the temperature outlook too as well which is also another thing that's issued by the Clamp Pritchin Center. So let's go ahead and first start off with what's happening for the rest of today and as you can see we still do have a slight risk for severe storms across the I-95 corridor heading from Richmond Virginia all the way down into portions there of southern Maine so if you do live in this yellow color definitely be on high alert as this does include Boston Massachusetts back into Springfield Albany New York back into New York City New York even into Philadelphia Baltimore even into Washington DC and of course Richmond Virginia will all need to be on high alert as we could very well see a few more severe thunderstorms tonight same goes for this area over here doesn't really include very many cities or populated cities but we could still see some damaging winds and large hails here so if you do live in this area at least be watching the weather for a few severe storms but overall we're not really concerned about this area as much as we are concerned about this area for tomorrow as you can see we continue to see some severe weather across the east coast and it kind of does shift farther down to the south but chances of hail damaging winds and of course an isolated tornado are going to be on the lower side of things but i would still be watching for you know at least some damaging wind gusts and perhaps some small hail across this area so if you do live across the north carolinas back into southern virginia at least be watching for those things like i said and there's nothing really much you need to worry about as we head into tomorrow same goes for this area over here we might be a little bit more concerned about severe storms over here but we could still you know very well be, just be seeing some damaging wind gusts and of course some small hail over here we could see an embedded site risk in here um in somewhere in these areas i think if one got issued it would be for like northeast colorado back into portions there of nebraska so i think that would probably be the area to watch for for a site risk potentially but overall we're mainly just focusing on the threat for some damaging winds and again some small hail will be the main concern as of right now but if we do get a slight risk we'll let you know as we do head into tomorrow now let's go ahead and look at the flood risk okay as you can see we do have a few areas we are watching for one across portions there of the mid-atlantic and then we got another one towards arkansas back into mississippi even into south East Oklahoma and as well as into Northeast Texas will be two of the areas to watch for. We even got to watch this over area over here into New Mexico back into Texas. So if you do live in any of these yellow colors, be on high alert for some flash flooding as we could be seeing some more thunderstorms tonight across the mid Atlantic, like I said. But you know, these two areas could very well see the same thing too, as well. This area might not be seen as many thunderstorms, but it also doesn't take much thunderstorms to cause flooding as that soil is very hard. It's been dry for quite some time and it's even been getting drier since we haven't had a whole lot of rainfall. So, you know, since we we don't need a whole lot of rainfall to cause flooding that's why it's there so definitely be on high alert for flash flooding across New Mexico back into western Texas but of course these two areas as well and that will be for the rest of today now let's go ahead and look at tomorrow's um, excessive rainfall outlook and as you can see we do have a threat for some flash flooding across the Carolinas and even into Virginia Beach we even do have another one across Texas into northwest Louisiana 
Indiana. That will be another area to watch for. And then, of course, we still got to continue watching for that flood potential across New Mexico and perhaps southern Colorado. So if you live in any of these areas tomorrow, definitely be on high alert for some flash flooding. And then last but not least for day three, which will be after tomorrow on Friday, we continue to see that flood threat persists across the Carolinas and same goes for portions there of New Mexico. Now if we look at the Climate Prediction Center outlook as you can see we continue to see well above average temperatures out to the west as we have a new ridge of high pressure system entering out here into the west which is going to continue to keep areas dry and as well as bring above you know average precipitation in some areas but you know especially um, bring above average temperatures so some areas will be dry especially up here to the north some areas will see above average precipitation like new mexico and even into arizona and then especially above average temperatures across the west and some areas could even get some record highs still as we will still be seeing well above average precipitation so it really just depends on where you live here out west will determine on if you'll also see drier conditions or above average precipitation and like i said new mexico is going to be one of those areas to watch for above average precipitation as there is a risk of that but we're mainly focusing on texas for well above average precipitation back through the south southeast into the mid mississippi valley and as well as the ohio and tennessee valleys and into the mid-atlantic being one of the big areas to watch for and that's going to be from July 23 all the way to July 27th. So that time frame, we could very well see above average precipitation across any of the screen shading that you see on screen. And then we also will be quite dry up here towards the the Kokodas back into parts of the Rocky Mountains. For the 8 to 14 day outlook, we continue to see um, some above average temperatures out here to the west. The chances aren't as high, thankfully. We actually start to get in to some below average temperatures across the northwest thankfully but we still continue to see the same thing across the central plains and even into the parts of the southern plains and into the deep south and then kind of around that we start to see some above average precipitation still or at least above average temperatures rather but some of those areas will definitely need to watch for above average precipitation too as well and this is going to be from July 25 5th all the way to July 34, 31st rather. So if you do live in any of the screen shaded color, also be watching for above average precipitation too as well. And again, we continue to stay dry across the Dakotas back into parts of the Rocky Mountains. Now for the temperature outlook, as you can see, we will likely sometime um, see excessive heat in between um, July 25th all the way to July 31st, mainly to the northeast of this line that you see right there. So pretty much Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, back into Minnesota will be the area to watch for some above average temperatures, bringing the risk of excessive heat still. We won't be like well above average, but we'll still be at least enough to where there could still be some heat issues so definitely be aware of that and then south eat west of that line so pretty much southwest um across you know western montana back into southwest wyoming across utah nevada um idaho even into california um arizona and even colorado will likely see some of the same thing where we will see above average temperatures from july 25th all the way to july 26th so you know this will also be the area to really be watching for some excessive heat too as well and again we're not going to be well above average with our temperatures but we will still be somewhat above causing still some issues for excessive heat for the precipitation outlook as you can see we are very well concerned about above average precipitation across the entire region that is going to be from july 25th all the way to july 27th and anywhere in the screen shaded color we could very well see some heavy rainfall and that pretty much includes the 
the Southern Plains, back into the South and Southeast, into the Atlantic, and as well as into the Mississippi Valley, and even into the Lower Ohio Valley, and as well as the Tennessee Valleys, will be the area to be watching the closest for some pretty good heavy rainfall totals as we do head into the last week of July. So definitely be watching for that. And then back out here to the west, even though we will be seeing the chance for excessive heat, we'll also be mixing in with some pretty high wind gusts. We could see some 60, perhaps some 70 mile per hour winds in some areas, and that's going to be the same time frame as we will be watching for some excessive heat. So it might not feel as hot as it really is um, during that time frame, but we still got to be, you know, watching for some above average temperatures across that area and of course some high winds too as well as we do have that risk. Total precipitation that is pretty much from now all the way to July 27th or 8th. And as you can see, very well above average precipitation across the south to the southeast back into the Atlantic where we could see some very high totals around 2 to even as much as 5 inches of rainfall in some areas. We even see a similar situation across parts of the northern Great Lakes as we will have that active jet stream just north of that high pressure system so you know we definitely do need to also be watching for that across the great lakes ohio valley and in even into parts of the midwest but you know we will be dry at times especially near the st louis region where we will likely only see a few drops of rain and that's about it so we at least need to be watching for some precipitation like i said across ohio valley and midwest but you know, we're at least going to be somewhat drier than the deep south into the mid-Atlantic. Now, if we take a look at the last thing, this is pretty much going to be the tropics and what we can expect as we do head into August. So, starting off with July 24th all the way to July 30th. And as you can see, we will likely see some systems try to form into the eastern Pacific as we got that red color showing up. So that can definitely indicate somewhat a chance of a system developing in the eastern Pacific. So that will be an area to watch for. And then that chances increase as we do head into July 31st all the way to August 6th where we have a likelier chance of seeing a tropical system developing in the eastern Pacific. But we even start to see that that chance increase across the Caribbean too as well so we will need to watch both of these areas as we do head into the beginning of August so if you do live like across the Gulf Coast even the um, northeast and as well as um, the eastern Pacific make sure to be on high alert for some potential hurricanes to develop and I didn't necessarily mean the northeast I meant more the east coast but some of those systems could very well well track up the east coast and head towards new england only if they can reach warm waters and of course strengthen so we will definitely need to be watching for something like that to happen as we have that high pressure system right near bermuda which will likely steer conditions or tropical waves near the gulf coast or steer them up the east coast as that is pretty much in the middle atlantic ocean but thank you guys very much for watching hope you guys did enjoy this video definitely like and subscribe and of course click that notification bell so you are notified whenever i do do videos and of course go live so i can keep you guys safe um also if you guys will please um share my channel with more people that will be great and that's also because if we can try to spread the word out that will help me a lot better with doing life coverage because then I know I'm keeping a lot more people safe so please spread the word by subscribing and of course sharing my videos with other people so that will definitely help a lot but if you also haven't comment down below already that will also be another cool thing to do as that will definitely you know help me with figuring out other things so don't forget to comment subscribe um, like and as well as click that notification bell down below as we will continue to keep you guys updated with future weather.